Hey, it's Jason from Pro Guitar Studio. Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at something that I love to play with, something called an arpeggio. Now this is a great thing for those of you who are sort of tired of playing with, let's say, just pentatonic scales, and you're looking to sort of push yourself in terms of soloing, in terms of making phrases and lines, um, because arpeggios are essentially going to outline the chords that we're playing. So an arpeggio, the definition there is a broken chord, and you can do them as a lead guitar, sorry, a rhythm guitar thing. If we'd had like, let's say an A7 chord. We can play individual notes, right? But we can also do them individually as separate notes when we're playing over top of a chord. And the benefit here is that if we're stuck playing with scales, let's say like an A minor pentatonic, if we play through a minor blues, just using the A minor pentatonic scale, even a major blues, whatever kind of blues you want to do, or whatever progression you're playing with, what you're typically doing is using your ear to try to hear which notes sound good and bad. Which can be good if you know which notes do sound good. But oftentimes, if you're just experimenting and you're just getting started with this, you may not know which notes work over which chord. And so, even if you've dug into the theory, you've looked at the chord tones for each chord and you've understood which note you need to land on, it can be sort of hard to think of that in the moment. So a lot of times we're relying on our ears to figure out those phrases within the scale, right? And it's a lot of guessing, a lot of trial and error, and over time if you practice it, you know, you can get pretty good. But if you want to sort of get, you know, fast track to understanding which notes belong in which chord, arpeggios are the answer for this because we can look at, let's say, an A7 chord, which we're going to do today. We can see the chord and we can outline the notes in the actual chord. Instead of trying to think of which notes from the scale belong in the chord and which notes we have to alter to get those notes in the chord. There's a lot of things to think of there. So we're just going to work through this rhythmic piece that I wrote using just a dominant 7 or a 7th arpeggio. And I was just following a 12-bar blues, sort of a classic like soul funk kind of thing. Uh, and we're basically playing through an A7 chord a D7 chord and an E7 chord. But we're following the 12-bar blues, so it's four measures of A7, two measures of D7, two measures of A7, one, or actually in this case here, two measures of E7, back to two measures of A7. So we're gonna start on the root note of A, because A is the first chord, and we're gonna play that two times, so it's, uh, fifth fret, string number six, and then we're gonna play four on the fifth string to seven on the fifth string to the 5th fret string number 4, and then 7th fret string 4, 3 times. We're going to pull off to the 5th fret, or you can pick it if you want, finishing on the 7th fret string number 5. Now for demo purposes, I'm just playing all down picks, trying to make it easy for everyone, but you could do alternate picking here where you're basically playing a down pick on the down beat and an up pick on the up beat. It can be a little more percussive that way, but here's all the down picks. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is from, you know, a bass line from a song or it's something similar to a song you've already heard because all this kind of stuff, especially for bass lines, is all over the place, right? So it's like your classic blues bass line is in so many different songs. Um, so that's our A7 chord and we're going to do it twice. And so each of those riffs is two measures long and then we're going to bring everything down one string. So fifth fret string number five for the D7 chord. So 5-5, five, five, and then 4-7 on the 4th string, to the 5th fret string number 3, and same thing, 7-7-7, seven, 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 5, to 7 on string number 4. Let me go to E, so 7th fret string number 5, actually, I missed one part there. Uh, what I missed was that we're going back to A, so we did two times on the A7, once on the D, so the 5th fret string number, number 5, and then back again to the A, so the first, uh, the first riff we did, 5th fret string number 6, and then we're going to go to fret number 7 on the A string, this is the E note, 
So twice there. Six, nine on string number four. To seven on string number three. And then we're gonna play nine, 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 pull off to seven, to nine on string number four. Back to our riff, the original riff. One time. All right, so A, seven twice. D7 once, A7 once, E7 once, back to A7 once. So it might be hard to play up the speed that I'm doing there, but the idea there uh, is a really common thing to use, and it's actually a good thing, I should say. It's a good thing for you to practice uh, to get that arpeggio, the dominant seven arpeggio, the A7 arpeggio under your fingers. So, that chord shape, the A7, could be expanded by raising the seventh note on the scale. And it gets confusing because when we look at chords, we have the root, the third, the fifth, and then in this case here we have the flat seven. But if you make it raise that by one fret, we get the major seven. You probably recognize that if you know Stranger Things. The theme song is just a major seven arpeggio. But we can do the major seven. We can also do a minor seven by lowering the third, which is the second note in the arpeggio. We can go down like this. So there's a lot of things you can do once you get that dominant arpeggio down, the A7. We can raise notes, lower notes, and essentially outline any chord that we want. Um, but this is a nice starting point to get your fingers used to this. Now for the solo section there, I was just improvising, but I wanted to demonstrate what it would sound like if I was using mostly chord tones arpeggios. So doing stuff where I'm outlining the chord using different scales and arpeggios that fit within that chord, instead of just playing like the A minor pentatonic. It makes it a little more interesting, right? Uh, but the biggest thing here was getting those arpeggios down. So practice those. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Right here, I was just doing a one octave version of the arpeggio. So if you need more of that, let me know if you'd, if you'd like to see me do a lesson on a more elaborate arpeggio shape, like all six strings in a rhythmic way, just let me know. I know I've done some lessons on that before, but uh, always willing to take some requests. If you have questions, please let me know as well. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Helps me know that, you know, know of what I'm doing here is right for you. And if you enjoyed this video, again, please subscribe for more videos like this each week. So hope you enjoyed it. I will see you soon.